It's a new year, and this channel recently surpassed 5,000 subscribers, and so I thought I would give an update on the channel and my plans for it and what you can expect to see. Uh, this kind of video is not the type I usually make. Uh, I generally don't try to speak off the cuff. I'm not very good at it. Uh, most of the videos that have a lot of views on this channel are some of my more polished uh, view, uh, videos that had a lot of preparation. In fact, I just stumbled and I'm probably not going to edit that out. Um, but if I don't sit down to give you a quick status update, I fear that uh, with Cyberpunk 2077 looming on my PC to the right of me, I never will. So uh, I think we should just jump right on into it. Um, first of all, I'd like to say a very big thank you to uh, all 5,000 of my subscribers, which are now almost up to 6,000. In the last uh, 30 days, I've had uh, 600, sorry, 800 additional subscribers, and that's very flattering. Um, it really means a lot to me that people uh, value the kind of work that I'm doing, and so I just wanted to say thank you. And I also wanted to say thank you uh, to all of my patrons on Patreon. Uh, your financial support helps in small ways and I appreciate it very much. Um, just simply having a direct line to some of you uh, also helps very much bounce ideas off of you, and I've accepted some private messages uh, from many of you, and just really glad to, to interact with you. Um, if you're curious where uh, Patreon money went uh, for the production of this channel, a lot of the stuff that I've paid for myself, but one thing that the Patreon money definitely did go to was a teleprompter, and that may sound a little strange, um, because not every, a lot of people shy away from teleprompters. I actually really enjoy it and embraced it um, because, as you can tell, I'm not the best at forming my thoughts real time. And when I produced my last video, the DOS Sember uh, DOS Pass 640K video, that was 100% written and scripted. And I wanted to make sure that I could say what I needed to say in front of a camera without stumbling or saying the wrong thing, or needing 30 takes because I misspoke, or whatever. Um, and, the, and I used a teleprompter for the first time, and although my delivery was a little stilted, I felt it really helped with the pacing and the uh, directness um, of the video. Um, directness isn't the right word, but it, uh, it helped keep the video on track, and which also helped through with uh, production time as well. So. Uh, so there you go. I'm hoping this year uh, to put those funds toward a slightly better camera. Uh, I chose this particular location for this status update because it's unfortunately one of the only free areas in the house that isn't completely cluttered. Uh, I do all of my shooting in the basement. Uh, the basement has carpet and it is furnished, and this is also where all of my computer collection is. And uh, But it's very, very space constrained. Um, the ceiling is about six foot eight, and I am six foot two. So if I'm not careful, I bump my head. It also makes it hard to mount lights and things like that. So uh, one of the things I'd like to use, uh, what I'd like to upgrade for the channel uh, in the future is um, a better camera. Um, I'm looking at the GH5S, which does very well in low light as adding a lot of light is one of my issues. Uh, I have uh, a list of topics here I'd like to talk about. Um, I'll try to get through them as quickly as possible, and I'll put indexes uh, in the description so you can skip to parts that you care about. So the channel has had uh, success and growth, and unfortunately, if you look at the back catalog, you'll see that I average roughly six videos a year, and that is because the type of thing that I do, I try to present a subject in uh, a very researched, measured way. Um, I spend a lot of time putting together the videos, and I don't want that to... to I, I want to continue doing that. I feel that there's value in that. Um, so, but I would like to increase my output to roughly one video every six weeks, and so I'm going to be working on that. Um, I feel that uh, a lot of people can just simply turn on a camera and talk. That's great if you can do that. If you have an engaging personality and can, you know, communicate effectively uh, off the cuff, that's fantastic. But I'm not one of those people. So uh, I will continue to do the same type of videos. Now, also, if you look at my back catalog, you'll see that uh, I essentially focus on two different things. Vintage computing and vintage gaming uh, software, history, demonstrations, etc., as is plainly evident by some of my collection here. Uh, and the other thing, 
which was started to help my friends, is how to properly archive media. So there's a, my, my most successful video on the channel is actually how to archive VHS to digital media, um, probably due to search engine optimization, uh, probably due to the fact that it is a longer video and so and it runs at a very measured pace and so people are sort of compelled to continue watching it all the way through. Um, but it makes for a mixed message when you look at the channel. Uh, what I would like to do is through 2021 produce hopefully one professional video every six weeks, grow my subscriber base, grow my views, and then move all of the archival media to a second channel, all of the archiving media stuff to a second channel um, and produce more content for that channel as well, but only one or two videos a year. The, the state of archiving media doesn't, um, doesn't change that often. Uh, the reason I'm waiting to do that, uh, to make the channel's messages unified, is because that video on how to archive digital media it, how to archive VHS to digital media is kind of an, uh, this is not a very politically correct term, it's kind of an anchor baby video, meaning that it's the video that produces the most amount of watch time, hours of watch time for the channel, which keeps the channel monetized. My hope for 2021 is that with enough vintage computer regular content coming out, that will become the onus and then I can move those videos to a different channel and not have to worry about monetization. Monetization isn't necessarily super important for me from a monetary standpoint. Um, the reason my output is low is because I have a full-time job that I use to support my, my wife and two kids. Um, but the But having it monetized is sort of a motivator, meaning if you have enough traffic, <clears throat> If you have enough traffic and you have enough subscribers uh, and you have enough watch time to generate money, that is motivation for you to continue doing better and you know increasing the the amount of time and quality that you put into the content for the channel. It's uh, it's a watermark, and once you're past the watermark and you're earning money, then it's like oh I'm do I'm I'm here I've made it I'm finally doing this correctly. Now I I don't mean for that to sound disparaging to a lot of uh, content creators who haven't hit the 1,000 subscriber mark and 4,000 hours of watch time per month mark, um, because everybody starts somewhere, and I would encourage you to continue doing that. I'm just saying for me, that has helped me prioritize my, my time and my goals, and I hope it continues. So keeping the channel monetized isn't necessarily for the money for me, it's for the motivation to continue making content that is useful to people or at least interesting and uh, entertaining. So, uh, again, uh, no cuts. This is totally off the cuff, which makes me very uncomfortable. I'm, I'm not someone who does this. Um, let's see what else I was going to talk about. Um, so what can you expect uh, coming up on the channel? What are the, the main things I'm going to be working on? Uh, for 2021, I've prioritized a couple of subjects. The number one subject that I feel must be covered in 2021 is how to identify original shrink wrap on software collectibles. So unfortunately, all of these, okay, well, here's one, for example. Uh, so stunts, my copy of stunts is still shrink wrapped. It is a desirable title. And because it is still wrapped in an excellent condition, it commands a fairly high price on eBay. How can I tell the shrink is original? Because I don't know if this shows up on camera and I don't know if it's going to focus properly, but there is a horizontal fold for this particular shrink wrap. And you, you would see this, I think, sometimes on Nintendo cartridges. So that's one way. Another way is that the shrink is flexible. Uh, and there are other markers that you can use to determine if the shrink is original or not. Why is this important? Because it, because shrink can be reapplied with a machine. And there have been very many, unfortunately, uh, documented uh, examples of unscrupulous sellers in the last five years re-shrink wrapping their stuff and selling it as factory original shrink wrap. Sometimes that can 
nearly double the amount of money that a software collectible will fetch in an auction or a private sale. So in an effort to educate the public, uh, I feel that needs to be done. It still comes up and it's still a problem. Uh, one of the criticisms I'm already bracing for is that uh, some people will say, well, if you show people, I mean, and one of the goals of this video is also to actually show you how to re-shrink wrap something. Um, and I have the background for this because I worked in two software stores uh, in the late 80s and early 90s, and I operated, I've, I've personally re-shrunk about, you know, at least a thousand titles. Um, and one of the main criticisms I get whenever I mention this is, well, aren't you just educating how to make new counterfeiters? My rebuttal to that is that um, people who are going to do this, um, first of all, they're already doing it. And if I make a video or I don't make a video, they're still going to continue doing it. So the best defense against that is an educated consumer. So that's priority. Um, another thing that is coming up, and this will help me make uh, videos in the future, is uh, an overview of how to connect CGA, MDA, and EGA, meaning non-VGA video standards for the PC, to HDMI. And this is something that changes drastically about every five years. Uh, and I was about to make a video on it uh, using the um, OSSC, which was very kindly donated uh, by a friend of mine and a patron, to do this. However, there have been uh, several new solutions for this. Some of them have, they have advantages and disadvantages. Um, so I want to cover that as well. So that'll be something. Uh, I would also like to showcase the rarest production PC sound card in the world, uh, which is not the AdLib Gold. Um, although one of those, I, I have, I have, I, oh, I can't believe I'm saying this. I own a fully boxed, uh, and up until a few days ago, completely unopened AdLib Gold. And I also have a loose AdLib Gold card. The fully boxed one uh, is lent out to a very prominent uh, YouTuber who will make a wonderful video about it. And I think that's great because that frees up my time to work on uh, what I want to do, which is the sound card that's even rarer than that. And that is the Bank Street Music Writer card, which is essentially a PC production version of the Mockingboard, which was popular on the Apple II. And it was bundled with one application and only supports that application. It was, it was abandoned for, for mainstream use. So I want to go into the history of that. I want to show off the card, produce very high resolution photos so that people can try to clone the card, uh, and of course, demonstrate the card. Um, I want to showcase, I want to explain the history of uh, disk compression, but with a lean towards hardware compression accelerator cards. There were, uh, how many of those do you think existed for DOS? I'll give you two seconds to try to guess. Turns out there were four, and I happen to have them all. Uh, two from Stacker, one called Expands, and another uh, called Disk Doubler from Datatran. And I would very much like to uh, explain disk compression in a nutshell and answer the question, which board was best? Which achieved the highest compression ratio and which board decompressed the fastest? Because one of the claims of these boards was that it would speed up your system because if your data compressed to half and it decompressed in real time, then reading half the data meant it could read it in half the time. So we'll put those claims to the test. Uh, I also have uh, a video that I'd love to do honoring Mark Brown, who I've lost touch with, and I would love to know if he's still out there. Um, Mark Brown was a, tr P a tracker musician, and he created the best Star Control 2 music you've never heard. And it's a wonderful a uh, very cool story um, that I have a very uh, cynical, not cynical, I have an interesting twist on it. I think that he composed some music and submitted it, and it was not included in the final product. Uh, although he was paid for his efforts, and he shows up in the credits. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to explain uh, what I, why I think that music wasn't included, and I'm going to see if it's possible to hack it into Star Control 2 and replace the main battle theme, and, uh, and of course play the music, so you'll get to hear about that. Um, 
a very a kind of a quick silly video that I'd like to do, this might be when I'm possibly running short on time, is that I would like to show off the real packages of the most commonly pirated software and games uh, for uh, 1980s PCs. Uh, for example, just a very quick, uh, everybody has played Alley Cat. Uh, it is probably one of the most pirated PC games of all time. You ever curious what it actually looked like? This is what it actually looked like. It was in a folio package from IBM, and it has a picture of the disc inside, which is very strange, and there, and it, even though the label doesn't match up, and then there is, in fact, the actual disc. So, that's one example. Um, and I've, uh, I'm going to take a poll, a second poll, to try to see uh, what, what people would like to see there and what I can, uh, what I can uh, show off. Uh, and then finally, once I get the, EG, the uh, CGA to HDMI situation all settled, um, I would like to do a series of games that pushed the limits of the IBM PC. Uh, games that for 1980s PCs, I'll probably limit this to, to 3D6 and under, and a lot of it will be showcasing very specifically the, the original IBM PC. Games that did things that were very atypical and made it appear as if the PC had more capabilities than it really had. Games that uh, smooth scrolled the entire screen in both directions. Games that uh, scrolled the screen diagonally uh, while still maintaining a status bar with no frame tears or updates. Games that had multi-channel music on the title screen uh, through the PC speaker. And they were not mod players or trackers. This is still the original system, so um, I would like to cover that. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, so, these are all the things I'd like to cover in 2021. And again, once I have the those done, and I feel that the momentum of the channel is self-sustaining, I will move, I will create a, se uh, a second channel for the media archive stuff. And I would actually like to expand on that a little bit too. Um, there are already some good titles for how to, uh, some good videos and tutorials for how to capture video. Um, I have my spin on a few things. Uh, for example, I have scanned and archived hundreds of magazines in 2020. How did I do it while maintaining quality and not losing my sanity or my time? And I'd like to make a video on that. I'd also like to make a media archival video showing you uh, my process for restoring VHS video. Uh, I have a process that doesn't cost a whole lot of money. It does cost a whole lot of time. Um, because it can take uh, hours, if not days, to convert an hour of footage, but the conversion is an excellent deinterlacing, and it's uh, generally a very good quality denoising as well, and so I'd like to share that. So I have some content planned for that as well, but my main focus for the old school PC, for this channel you're on right now, will be uh, vintage computing and gaming on the IBM PC and compatibles in the 1980s. So that's about all I wanted to cover. Um, I think it would only be fair to, before I go, just to let you know what some of the challenges that, uh, that I've incurred um, trying to do the channel. I've already mentioned time is one of them. Money isn't necessarily one of them. I've been able to make do, I think, with some cheap lights and a, a fairly decent camera. I'm, I'm currently using a, uh, I'm invested in the Micro Four, th micro four Thirds system. Uh, that has trouble getting a lot of light into the lens. However, I have been able to invest my, my own personal funds for my own uh, personal use of the camera, um, some very high quality fast lenses. Uh, so this is a Panasonic G85. It's currently on full auto. Again, that makes me super nervous. I usually shoot everything manual, but uh, hopefully this image quality is just fine. Um, the Challenges I have roughly uh, are getting enough light into the space, uh, trying to make enough space to make a video. Um, I don't know if it looks like it, but most of my videos are shot in, extremely, in an extremely cramped space. I've got roughly, oh, I'd say maybe eight feet square to work with. Uh, a wide angle lens helps a lot. <laughs> Uh, being creative with uh, camera mounting it also helps. Uh, a video I did, I submitted for uh, uh, Neil's um, 
uh, RMC. It used to be called Retro Man Cave. It's now simply called RMC to be friendlier to everyone who, who likes retro computers. Um, where I demonstrated several packages and it was an overhead view. Well, I don't have room for a complicated stand to uh, mount a camera looking down. So I just simply mounted my spare camera to the ceiling. So it is permanently attached to the ceiling, not permanently, but semi-permanently attached to the ceiling, um, looking straight down. So, uh, you get creative. Uh, I don't see, uh, I think it's also important to be practical about what I expect from the channel in 2021. Uh, I am not expecting this to be a gigantic moneymaker. I am extremely happy for those who, for whom it has been. Uh, Modern Vintage Gamer is one of my favorite uh, uh, rags to riches story. I mean, he's, he still has a full-time job and he still works full-time as a software uh, programmer, but he has found a workflow uh, and a time schedule that allows him to make one video per week. And I think it's doing very well by him financially. And, and I'm very happy to hear that and all power to him. Um, but if I'm being realistic, I have a full-time job. So this will always be a, a side hustle, um, a labor of love, really. Uh, I have six topics that I mentioned to you for 2021. Um, I have over 200 in a spreadsheet with various notes of pre with various pre-production notes and rankings on how difficult they would be to film, to script, to present whether or not they would need specialized equipment. And this spreadsheet, when I sort by some of those characteristics, um, gives me a, a sorted, a, a, a prioritized list of what I can work on. So um, what will probably happen in the future, once I get through the topics I really want to get through in 2021, uh, I will start opening up uh, the top three production ideas on that spreadsheet to my patrons and with a poll and allow them to vote. Um, and if uh, I don't get enough votes, I'll probably open it up to a poll on Twitter uh, where I have a nice following on Twitter. Um, I think I'm up to about 3000 followers. Um, and I usually get about 75 responses to the polls I put there. So lots of good stuff coming. Uh, and I really appreciate you taking the time, if you've gotten this far, to watch everything. Again, just really want to thank you for your support. If you have any suggestions for anything you'd like to see, please feel free to leave them in the comments below. And uh, if you're not subscribed, I have no idea how you stumbled onto this video, but if you're not, please do. Um, it, again, it's, it's an indicator to me of how valued my contribution to the world of vintage computing and gaming history um, is. So please do. Uh, and with that, um, try to be safe in these uncertain times. Hopefully uh, we won't be worried about a pandemic in 2022, and I can start seeing a lot of you in person again at various computer festivals. So thanks for watching and uh, be safe.